Hey guys, Dello304 here. I am slowly getting my computers up and running. I actually found this hard drive here. It's a Hitachi 100 gig that was pulled from my Lenovo ThinkPad X201 that I had for a while once I upgraded it to an SSD. If you're wondering, that laptop has been sold long ago, so don't ask about it. But I found this hard drive in my bin, and I figured, oh, hey, I can put this in the Toshiba satellite laptop over there, because that is a computer that is in need of a SATA hard drive. Saw this in there, I was like instantly, okay, yes, this is a 100 gig, it's from 2007, it's a Hitachi, I am not a fan of Hitachi, although this is a 7200 RPM drive, as you can see there. So it should be decently quick. But I've said, okay, this is a perfect fit for the Toshiba, so we're going to stake it in. That's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Just a little quick interjection before I actually start doing this. I have the Dylan Spron 8600 there. I will be bringing that back to my other house tomorrow when I go back over there. Because I am expecting a shipment of six IDE hard drives that I ordered, that should be coming tomorrow. So I will be probably making more videos concerning other computers that I pull in to stick those hard drives in. I have... I think actually, yeah, I have the D500 at my other house that needs a hard drive. I have the ThinkPad T21, which magically came back to life, but I'll probably replace the hard drive anyway. And I also have these two, well, no, actually, I moved them over here. I also have the Inspiron 8100 and the Sony Vaio, which also are in need of hard drives. So I will be installing some hard drives in there once I receive them and I am able to make videos concerning that. This Dell, Dell Inspiron 8500, by the way, that I made a video about in the trash, or made a segment about in the Trash Pick Laptops video, which was actually quite long, this computer actually does post, even in its horrible condition. I'm not going to put a hard drive in it, though, just because it's trashed, it doesn't have a power button cover, so... Yeah, it's just, it's not in the condition that's good enough for me to stick a hard drive in it. Anyway, that's enough rambling for now. I will have another video concerning that topic probably in the near future. So, yeah, let me go ahead and get this hard drive inserted in the Toshiba. Something interesting about this computer is it actually has two hard drive bays. I'm not exactly sure which one is the primary, but I don't think it will matter that much, although judging by the covers here, I think this one is the primary bay. So that's we'll, that is where we'll be, we will be sticking this hard drive. I assume this hard drive bay had a caddy that was supposed to go along with it, but since we don't have that, we are just going to kind of just stick it right in. It's going to be slightly difficult to get this drive in without a hard drive caddy. And as you can see, it's not completely flat, but once we flip the laptop back over, it'll go back up and rest against this door, so it should be just fine. Let me go ahead and close this up. I'll get these two screws in, and we are going to be installing Windows Vista Home Basic. Why? Windows Vista Home Basic is a pile of junk. Why would I be installing this? Well, because this computer was designed for it. It only has one gigabyte of RAM. Why not we compound the situation by putting Windows Vista on it? I just thought it was kind of appropriate for the time frame, and this is kind of a, you know, junky laptop anyway, so we're going to do that. By the way, for those wondering, this is a Toshiba Satellite A135 S2386. I didn't specify that in my previous video concerning this thing because I wasn't aware, but I just, just now looked on the bottom to find the model number. So I guess this is the universe telling me that that was a bad idea, but I've neglected to acknowledge that that is an upgrade disk. So you have to install Windows XP to be able to upgrade to that. So we're not doing that. We're going to be installing Windows 7 Home Premium because I just so happen to have a disk. So I'm going to exit saving changes even though I didn't really change anything. We're going to go to the boot menu which I believe is F12. You can see me. Hello people. Let's wait for this to do something. We're going to boot from the DVD drive. Wow, I'm going to be visible like this whole time. <laughs> Mm, there we go. Okay, so I'll be back when the installer loads. I'm still completely unaware of the specs of this machine. I know it has an Intel Pentium dual core. I'm not sure what the clock speed, the core count, which is, well, it's dual core, duh. That was kind of dumb. I'm not sure of the clock speed, the cache size, or anything of that nature. I'm not sure of, well, I know it has one gigabyte of RAM, I'm not sure what ATI graphics card it has, but it is ATI by this 
as denoted by this sticker. I'm really not sure of the full specs on this machine, so I guess we're going to find that out once I install Windows 7. You've seen you've seen like a million Windows 7 installs, so it's kind of redundant to record all this, so I guess I'll wait until I get to the desktop before I record another segment. As you can see, I mentioned this in the original video on this computer. The screen does get red, but it, it's really red when you first turn it on and then after a while it goes away. That is actually backlight wear, so I'm not exactly sure if the backlight is built into the display. I'm pretty sure it is. But either way, it's not really a big deal. So we're going to click next and we'll get this installed and see how it goes. We're getting somewhere. Much farther than we were before. It was definitely the hard drive that was causing that. I do want to make a little interjection real quick though. This is my iMac G3. Uh, I want to say about a year ago it was I made a little video on destroying the operating system basically you run just a little tiny command it'll destroy it'll delete your whole hard drive basically so what we're going to be doing since I actually located my OS 10 10.3 discs finally I found them we are going to be reinstalling OS 10 on the iMac G3 that's going to be in the next video I'm not going to mash these two videos together we're going to keep them separate so look out for that for the next video after this one but we are working it is booting so that is cool. Also, when I become unlazy, I will try to get this Macintosh TV working. I never really, I haven't made a video on this computer because I acquired it during when I wasn't here. Basically, the problem is, is it doesn't boot from anything. I assume the OS needs a reinstall. I'm not entirely sure if the hard drive is dead, but we are going to attempt to reinstall Mac OS System 7 on here. I just need to figure out how to burn the disks and apparently you can boot from a CD on this computer so that makes it easier than burning floppies so I will try to get that done when I feel like it don't expect anything just I might do that soon so there you go I'm glad it picked up the wireless card that makes my life a lot easier when I have to download drivers and stuff otherwise I would have had to download them on a different computer and use a USB flash drive to transfer them over here but since it detected the wireless card we are good to go and I can start installing the missing drivers so that is very cool I think this thing might need a clean out on the inside because it's uh, fans running full bore and I'm doing absolutely nothing nice finally we can take a look at the specs it has an Intel Pentium dual core T2080 at 1.73 gigahertz one gig of RAM that I have installed and a 100 gig hard drive obviously still don't know what GPU it has after install drivers but there are the specs so the graphics adapter is an ATI Radeon Express 200M interesting with 128 megabytes of dedicated memory so there you go and there we have it Windows 7 is installed on this Toshiba satellite with the drivers installed I'm just going to kind of leave it like this, I guess, because I'm not really going to use this computer. If I need a Windows 7 laptop, I have the Compact Rosario. But I just kind of wanted to get this working just to make for a little video. So, there you are. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you guys later.